Okay, so Elul is the last month before our new year of years on the Hebrew calendar, Rosh Hashanah. Um, and we are in the first Shabbat of Elul right now. Rosh Chodesh Elul, the beginning of the month of Elul was this past week. We announced it last Shabbat and now we're in the first Shabbat in the month. So let's just hear from the room. What are some things, and on Zoom, if you're on Zoom, you can type it in the chat. We'll read, I'll read it afterwards. And um, what are some things people know about Elul? Just shout it out. I'll repeat some on the mic. What do we know? It's a month of reflection. Amazing, Joyce, thank you. You blow shofar. Every day tradition to blow shofar in the month of Elul. You start before the high holidays. That's great. Thank you. Say that again. Except on Shabbat, when you never blow shofar. Just so that everybody knows, Yom Kippur this year falls on Shabbat. So we won't hear shofar on Yom Kippur until the very, very end when we do Havdalah, and then we'll do a big <laughs> shofar blast. What else? Yeah, Jeff. Okay, well, that's an amazing transition. Thank you, Jeff, into what I um, want to talk about today. So, Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. So, our sages and our rabbis point out that the name of the month, Elul, can actually be read as an acronym for this verse from Shir Hashirin, the Song of Songs that Jeff just called out. Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. So, Elul, it's an acronym. Everyone hear it? Ani Lidodi Vidodi, that U is like a V, Li. Okay. Okay. So, and what does that mean? That means I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. This is, people might've heard this. It's popularized now to use at weddings. You might've heard it in songs. It's a popular verse that gets used in lots of different contexts. And Shir Hashirim, where it comes from, is seen, it's a love story that's seen most often as a metaphor between the love of Israel, the people Israel and Hashem and God. And so with this verse being embedded in or being the name of the month, if it's an acronym, we can say, okay, we are now in the month of I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. That's the month we're in. So what does that mean exactly? So this verse, of course, has a lot of commentary on it. At its most foundational level, it's seen as an intensification of the love between the people Israel and God. And so we could also see Elul as the month of an intensification of the love between the people Israel and God. That's the month we're in. This verse also, and we'll come back to this at the very end, has a lot of commentary on it that you might read about the order of the verse. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. The first is I, and then my beloved reciprocating. In another place in Shir Hashirin, it's flipped. My beloved is mine and I am my beloved. So this one is I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. So we can also think about that in this verse. Most people say about that, that it has to do some, the commentary on that says, there's something to do with this order. I'm taking a first step forward and then God will reciprocate the love. And in the other way around, God takes the first step forward and then we come forward as humanity and reciprocate the love. Okay, so first, again, what I see this as meaning, what the sages and the mystics are pointing out about this acronym is that we're, we are in a month right now where it, we are in this intense love between us and God. And I wanna think about together what the significance of that is in this time in our Hebrew calendar. So why does that love happen right now, right before the high holidays? Okay, so raise your hand here or on Zoom if you've heard of the, the system of therapy called internal family systems. <laughs> okay, great, wow, amazing. Internal family systems, IFS, okay? It's a therapy that I somewhat recently in my life became um, aware of and I love the theory of it. It shares theory with a lot of other therapies too. So it's not, it's unique and not unique, but it's based on this, that if you want to change something within yourself, if you want a part of yourself to soften, 
The way that that happens is that you give that part of yourself loving attention. That part will shift it's, if it's given attention and love. So I'll give an example just so that we're all on the same page. So let's make up a person, Nancy. That's the name that I made up. It's not, not speaking to any Nancys in the room, <laughs> but also maybe to all of us. Um, so let's say that Nancy had an experience as a child where she got very scared and then somehow learned in that situation that if she could control lots of things in her environment and around her, she might feel more protected and like she's able to protect herself. But now in her life, she feels herself grasping for control in a way that she knows hurts her. And she wants to be able to soften that part of her that grasps for control or that grasps to micromanage everything around her. Okay, first of all, anyone resonate with, Na with this character, Nancy? And I, I know I do, yeah. Okay, so, um, so, so Nancy might naturally get mad or ashamed at that part of her. Maybe she would say, ugh, I hate the part of me that always wants to control everything. Why do I do that? I wish I could just loosen up, ugh, or ugh, good riddance to that part of me that wants to control everything. I'm tired of it, I hate it. But this, to deal with this in this way is not what IFS, Internal Family Systems, says to do, and many other therapies as well. IFS says to do actually the opposite, to approach that part with love and listening and a lot of attention, to even give that part a name, Maybe that part's named the controller. And then talk directly to that part. Maybe say, controller, hi, welcome, welcome. And thank you so much for, for working to protect Nancy. We know you care about her so much, thank you. And will you tell me a little bit about how you do your job that's controlling everything, why you do that, what you're scared of, and let the part actually talk. And what this therapy does Obviously, there's, there's all this, if anybody knows the therapy well, there's many complicated factors to it, but when that part is given loving attention and feels heard like a person, that part can soften. And then Nancy can experience a softening of her need and you know, felt need to control everything. Alternatively, what might be natural to do with that part, ugh, good riddance to that, or I'm ashamed, I hate that. Usually that self-shaming and self-punishment does nothing to soften the part, and in fact, can even harden it and make it fight for itself even more. Okay, so what is the significance of IFS therapy to the month of Elul on the Hebrew calendar? So, I think that it's clear to me that we know that change and softening and transformation happens through relationship and with love, with loving kindness. Ani ledodi vedodi li, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. Love, relationship. Elul is the month of love and relationship. And it comes right before the high holidays. And I know for myself, that when I'm doing the hard work of transformation, of change work, it's not easy, of looking honestly at myself and seeing which parts are not working so well that I'd like to shift. If I do that from the secure base of love, of God's love, the secure base of knowing that our tradition says that teshuva is possible, that will create the ability for me to actually change. And I invite us into all of that as we go through the month of Elul, leading up to the high holidays to know that we're loved, that we're supported in this work and that that makes it easier and more secure. Shabbat Shalom. Ay, ay, ay.